Hello there, it's me, Kimberly Gosney from MakingHeadway.us. At MakingHeadway.us, that's where I help you create a DIY website that you'll love. And today is no exception because we are digging into a really fun topic, and that is how to create bold featured image text for your blog featured images. We'll be using Adobe Illustrator for this tutorial today, and I cannot wait to have you jump on and learn something new in 15 minutes or less with me today. So lately I have been loving the look and feel of having featured images where there's some wording that's bigger, some wording that's smaller, but that all the words fit within the same area. So they all line up nicely on top of each other with a mix of bold and not so bold writing. So today I'm going to show you just how to do that. So first things first, we're going to be using Adobe Illustrator on the Creative Cloud, and I'm using the Creative Cloud 2015.3 edition of Adobe Illustrator's Creative Cloud. So also another thing before we jump in and get started, Adobe Illustrator for Mac users can look a little different than Adobe Illustrator for PC users. I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to try to go through the top bar options whenever possible so that you don't get stuck and can't find something because your screen looks different from mine. So let's cover the basic setup of how I have my artboard arranged. So first, if I click right here, I have my artboard arranged to consolidate all into one one window. I like all of my multiple tabs to appear in one nice easy spot. Next, if I click on window, I have application frame checked off, application bar is checked off, control is checked off. So those things are super duper important. Also under uh, workspace, I have essentials checked off. So that covers the flow of how the things are laid out on my computer. So now that I've covered those settings, and you can pause and rewind me because I went through that super fast, I know, but let's dig in to how we're going to create this like featured image style image. So first we're going to do File, New, and I'm creating a 1200 pixel wide by 630 pixel tall image. That's pixels over here in the pixels under units. That's the preferred size for Facebook. But you can use any size image here that floats your boat. If your website is 620 pixels wide, you could do 620 by 310 if you were only gonna use it on your website. I like to make as few images as possible, so I like to reuse my images on my website that are also my Facebook sized images. So the next step is to know what you want your featured image to say. So I will say this about the style that we're creating today. These are not the best style for Facebook ads because they're not going to get approved because the text is heavy and takes up more than 20% of the image. I like to use this style of image on my blog because it really jumps out and it stands out as being bold and you can definitely read the wording. So let's take a peek at my blog really quickly on makingheadway.us. Um, I love the way that this particular style looks for my, um, my featured images. So let me scroll down here so I can show you how that looks. Bear with me. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Here it is right here. So this one right here is a post that I did on making a sticky navigation menu and this one is on making more room on your Headway Themes menu. So as you can see these both have the same amount of text top to bottom but the wording is different sizes based on how many words are in each line. And also what's cool is some of the lines are the text is smaller and some is bigger but it all fits within that same amount of space. So this way you're not having Having words that are left aligned or center aligned or right aligned, they're all aligned to the amount of exact space. So this just gives you a very bold impact with your featured images for your blog, which then you can use when you're sharing on social media as well. I find that images like this where the text is really big and then you have a bright pop of color like I do with my um, my site name at the bottom, they really stand out and they get noticed more than a traditional blog image would. It's like screaming at you, take a look at this, and I love it. So let's dig in 
again to Adobe Illustrator and let's get started on this. So the first thing that you need is you need a couple of lines of text. You need to know what your post is going to say. So right now I'm just going to wing it, but I know you've got a post in mind for this or you wouldn't be watching this tutorial. So the first step is to choose your font. So I'm clicking on the type tool over here. You can also find that under type across the top menu, um, type and font, but I'm gonna click on the type tool and hopefully you've got your menu bar set up a little bit my, like mine so you can just pick your character from here. The font that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial is Helvetica. It's one of my favorites. I've loved it for years. I like it because it's simple, but I can have different types of text within that one font. I can have light, bold, oblique, um, bold, oblique. I can have regular. So there's a lot of different options. So now I'm just going to choose my font and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. It really doesn't matter though. It could technically be any size because we'll be adjusting the sizing in just a few minutes. So now I am going to give this title. I'm going to write the first line of text. So I'm going to put making um, bold featured and then I'm gonna stop because you need to keep your lines to like three or four words per line so now I'm gonna come back up here with this little arrow and I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna center the text so I'm aligning it to the center and then I'm also horizontally aligning it to the center but this is where this text piece really comes into play. I'm going to come over here to this transform tool and you'll notice that right now the width of this text is 376 pixels wide. I am going to bump this up to 940 pixels wide and immediately it becomes bigger and in the center of my canvas. So now I'm just going to move this up and out of the way. And now I'm going to grab me another line of type. So I'm just going to click the type tool again. You can click anywhere on your canvas. It's going to keep your original settings for what you were typing a second ago. And now I'm going to go ahead and type in the next line of my featured image. And this time I'm only going to put two words on this line. And I may change my mind in a second and come back to it. But I'm going to use two for right now. And I'm going to switch my font out to bold. So that's another, oh, let me highlight, sorry, highlight, and then switch your text out to bold. Now I'm going to come over here to transform, and I'm going to do that same thing again, 940 pixels wide. And see how huge that is? That makes that difference, and it also fits it in the same size. So the last step is to click our little selection arrow right here, click on our wording, and make sure that it's centered and centered. You always want to do that with each and every line. That way everything lines up in the middle, and see how now the edges are really crisp to both ends of words? I love that look. I really do. I love it. So now I'm going to type in my third line. I'm going to click on my type tool. I'm going to come back down here and I'm going to type in Adobe Illustrator because that's what I'm using to do this tutorial. So it's making bold featured images using Adobe Illustrator. That's the name of my blog post. So now I'm going to click my selection tool. I've got my Adobe Illustrator here. I'm going to come over to transform and I'm going to make this 940 pixels wide again and that's going to fill in all of that space. Next I'm just going to make sure that it's centered so that the wording lines up really nice and tight and then I'm just going to kind of eyeball it and push it into place to where I think might be a good spot for this to land. The last step that I like to do, and I'm getting ready to copy and paste this, but the last thing I like to do is I like to put my website up underneath that. So I'm coming over to another one that I made earlier, and I'm just going to um, do a few little ungroupings, and then I'm going to copy this little logo chunk, and I'm going to paste it in my new document. Now this logo chunk that I've created is a gradient text effect using Adobe Illustrator, and I have another tutorial. So if you're on my blog or on my YouTube channel, I just made a tutorial on how to make gradient text. So take a peek at that one next if you want to know how I made this look. So now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to transform. I'm going to set this to 940 pixels and hit enter so that it makes it the same width. Then I'm going to go ahead and center it and now I'm just going to slide it down into place. So now I have all four lines of my text 
all the same exact size. And you sometimes have to kind of play around with it a second or two to get them lined up in an even way that looks good to your eyeballs. So the great thing about this is because each line of text is on its own row, you can tweak and adjust as you need to. Like for example, if I wanted to take this featured word and put it down here with this one, I could just type it right in here. So F-E-A-T-U-R-E-D. And you see how it got super big? But now I can just hit my little selection tool right here and transform and then make this back to 940 pixels and then center it back up. And then I could come to this next line above it, remove the word featured, and then take this whole line and do the same thing, transform, 940 pixels and then that would be a totally different look but still with the same wording so you see how you can move through and swap these out and I've kind of liked the original better so remember it's always command Z on a Mac if you need to get back to something you had before so there you have it that is how you do it so now I'm just gonna go back through make sure that every one of these is centered in my canvas and then there is one other quick thing that I want to show you that's really helpful while you're making these kinds of images if you left click and drag out a little box it's gonna let you select everything all at one time and then from here you can do object and group and mush these together in one group. Then when you do that you can vertical align to the center and horizontal align to the center to make sure that your image is centered top to bottom and left to right. And every once in a while I still come back and center because I feel like it looks a little tiny pinch off to me in my brain. So there you have it. That is how you can make a bold featured image using Adobe Illustrator. Now it's time to save this featured image. And the great news here is because we're using Adobe Illustrator, we can save this as a template or we can save it as an AI file and use it over and over and over again. That way if you want to do another blog post next week and use the same exact template, it'll only take you a few seconds to pop in your words, adjust the sizing a little bit, and you'll have the bulk of the work already done in advance for you. That's why I love Adobe Illustrator so much. So let's go ahead and save this. So we're going to do file, save as, and we're going to save this as a template. And I'm going to call this the featured image template. And then you just hit enter to save that and then you're just going to hit OK. And then that's going to save you a working copy that you can use over and over and over again. Next step so that we can use it on your actual website or for your um, sending out your social media posts, we're going to do file, export, save for the web, and then we're going to choose JPEG and we're going to choose high as the file size. And now we're just going to click save and then you can give this a name and you can name this after your um, blog post if you'd like. So I'm going to call this Making Bold Featured Images in Adobe Illustrator. And I'm just going to hit save. I've already saved that file once, so now I'm going to have two. It's just going to overwrite it. But that's how you save it so that you have this to use over and over and over again. And also for your post that you've just created this image for. And I hope that you loved this quick tech tutorial, and I can't wait to share the next one with you. And if you are watching on YouTube, make sure you become a subscriber. I'd love to have you as a subscriber here on my YouTube channel. Or if you're on makingheadway.us, I'd love for you to um, hop on in and fill out the box right below this post so that way you'll get all of my posts for the week sent to you in a nice little weekly update email at the end of every week. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.